Hello YouTubers, Hammy Technoid here. And today we're going to look at a little bit of, about how to make a mirror cassette or a tape path alignment viewing tool, as some refer to it. But uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a cassette here, and this is one that I've chosen to be a candidate to become a mirror cassette, okay? And you will see, I will show you shortly why this is such a desirable type of cassette to use to turn into a mirror cassette. I'm gonna set that off to the side. Now, this one here, this is a cassette that I've already turned into a mirror cassette. And you see, there's the mirror, and there's a small amount of tape in there. And the reason there's a small amount of tape is because once you install the mirror, there's only a certain amount of tape that will be able to be allowed in there and it will work properly. Otherwise it will jam against the mirror. So you gotta kinda sort through a little bit of tape and then reattach it, you know, splice it back onto the leader and then uh, there you go. Okay, now this one was uh, similar to the one that I'm gonna show you because it was very easy to do and I'll show you why. Uh, this is the first one I've ever attempted and it turned out nicely, okay? Now, this one was the second one I attempted, okay? And you can see it's in a more traditional cassette case, a TVK as a matter of fact. And what I did is I put the mirror in there and I left part of the case intact, which you can choose to do if you want. You know, you can choose to leave part of the case intact, whereas with this one, I just cut that section right out. I just obliterated it and moved it away and, you know, tossed it. So, yeah, but if you like to have your cassettes look a little more traditional, you can leave this little bar right here in, okay? So, yeah, what, uh, what I found is the most desirable type of cassettes to be turned into mirror cassettes are ones that have this bracket right here. This bracket right here is removable. And let me show you. I'm going to put the cassette right here. And I've already removed the screws, so there's that. And this is the sleeve for anti-friction. You keep that, okay? And then there's the tape inside, okay? And you remove that. You need to remove that. So you remove the tape, okay? And now this part here, this part here, that just pops right out. It just pops right out all that mess right there that you would normally have to remove and I'll show you how you would have to remove it uh, is gone and now what you can do is you get your handy dandy and this is a tool that you would need you get your handy dandy hot knife okay this essentially is a soldering iron with a blade on the end of it and boy does it cut through plastic easy yeah that's how I cut this section out here, I just cut it with the knife, the hot knife, and bzzz, just cut it right out. And that's how I cut this section out with the hot knife, bzzz, right out. So yeah, you got to have a hot knife. Definitely get it. Need one. Okay. And then the main thing you're going to be doing is working with the mirror. Okay. So you got to have a mirror. And I ordered these from Amazon that three inches by three inches. I couldn't find anything smaller or closer to any of the size that I needed. So three inch by three inch, and they came in a pack of 10. I think they were like $12 or something, I forget. But uh, yeah, you need to get a mirror or mirrors if you plan on making more. I plan on making more mirror cassettes. I've already made two. I plan on making at least two more. So yeah. So once you get the, uh, the glass, the mirror, then you need something to cut it with. So you get a glass cutter. This right here. You get a glass cutter, and this thing will etch the glass. You gotta press firmly. You gotta press firmly on the glass, okay? And that'll, uh, do you see my face there? <laughs> okay. And then, uh, then once you etch it, now, because this is a mirror, you just can't etch the front. You gotta get a really sharp razor blade and go down the back right where you scored the front you got to go down the back otherwise you could have a tear in this material on the back that makes it a mirror and it won't look very nice and you just wasted your time okay so there's your mirror there and it's always nice to have a little ruler so that you can measure and the length 
the width of the the uh, mirror needs to be oh I don't know about three eighths of an inch, just shy of three eighths of an inch. So you want to make that right. And this also doubles as a nice straight edge where you can run your cutter across. You run your cutter across there, okay? And what you do is when you are cutting the glass, you make sure that the tip, the carbide tip, has some oil on it so it can cut through the glass better. You definitely want to have oil on that guy. Okay? So, once you've cut the plastic away, and usually I like to cut from the side that has the screws. So you get the side that takes the screws, and then you cut this part out, this part here, okay, like I did with this one. All right, and then to get the tape back in there, it's preferred that you use a C90 tape because it's thin and it'll wrap around the heads better so you can see the alignment. Okay, so you're gonna have to spool off, oh, a good half of this, if not more, so that you can get it back into the housing, get it back into the cassette housing, okay? And then once you get the cassette housing all put together, then you, it's just a matter of getting the mirror, and I don't have a sample of a small mirror, but you get the mirror and you tilt it in there at a 45 degree angle. It's gotta be a 45 degree angle because most of the time you're gonna be looking in a cassette from the front and you wanna be able to see the tape at the front like this, okay? And if you look, you can see the leader tape in there. You can see my finger moving and you can see the leader tape in there as well. And that is where you watch to see what kind of wrap you've got for your tape going through the alignment process there. So you wanna make sure that your tape is aligning right and your heads are aligned right and then there's uh then you can go ahead and calibrate the azimuth and the everything else along with head adjustments so yeah that's the that's the down and dirty of making a mirror cassette and it's a lot of fun i mean it is a lot of fun the one thing that you've got to be careful about though is cutting the glass you make sure you cut the glass so that it doesn't cut you <laughs> uh, yeah, one time I cut, I tried to cut, and I'm not very good at cutting. I got a better glass cutter tool on the way. This one, I don't know, is I'm going to blame it on this, but it's my fault too. Um, yeah, what I did is I cut the glass, and I went to snap it, and it should just snap cleanly, but it didn't, and it came back, and it got me in my thumb, and I bled for a good hour trying to get that thing to stop. So it's no fun getting cut by the glass. You make sure that the glass is ready to be cut right. And then you can have yourself a really nice mirror cassette tape alignment tool. So I hope this little tutorial here, I didn't go into a whole lot of it because I didn't show, but oh, one thing I forgot to mention, one thing I forgot to mention, I did. Um, if you decide that you wanna do this to your cassette rather than chop out the whole section, because this is a more traditional cassette and you have to get rid of this stuff that's in there. This stuff is essentially inside this cassette and the way I did it is I invested in a good old um, Dremel tool. Got me a Dremel tool. So yeah, got me a Dremel tool with a bunch of cutting bits and I just went to town on that case and it didn't stand a chance. So anyway, that's what I did. I got a Dremel tool and I chewed up the plastic, chewed up the plastic inside, made room for the mirror, and then inserted it. And all I used to hold the mirror in there is hot glue. Hot glue is all you need. Now there's different variations of hot glue. The hot glue I use is the kind that hardens really hard. It becomes almost like styrene plastic. There's the kind that hardens to a rubbery texture. I'd stay away from that. I get the hard stuff, and that's what I used on these. So now, this is the end. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And until next time, see you later.